Welcome to House of Hosting Heaven, a podcast for women that are ready to partner up with God in intentionally designing the Christian life they love living in. I'm Rutendo Melody Kanguru, and my journey started on my YouTube channel, The Teacher's Show. You should make time and go check that out. But on this podcast, I'm here to hold your hand as we both walk this journey. Listen, we're going to be doing this together. I'm also still work in progress. We're going to be navigating some of life's difficult, painful, confusing, and even some of life's exciting, rewarding, fulfilling, happy courses. Every single Friday, I bring you wisdom, clarity, insight, and even encouragement, all wrapped up in small little points and lessons. I hope today's episode will be a seasoned and seasonal word specifically for you. After this episode, the conversation continues in my weekly newsletter, which you can sign up for to receive weekly encouragement in the comfort of your inbox. I can't wait to see you in there. And now, as we start today's episode... Hello, everybody. In today's episode, I want to take you through a few places in my journey to writing my book, Hosting Heaven. So there's going to be a lot of stories in today's podcast. And if you're a storyteller and a person who loves to listen to stories, you are going to have a good time. I want to get you some backstage access into the back office of the brand that is hosting heaven. But before we get in there, I really just wanted to apologize for not showing up last week on this podcast. A lot of things have been happening. A lot of pieces have been moving in my space and in my life. And there's been a lot of different transitions that I'm really trying to manage that I will hopefully get an opportunity to share with you when I am finally through to the other side. So pray for me, family. Pray for me. But in today's podcast, I just I just hope that somebody's listening um, that really is at a place and a position where they are ready to have a flame spark in their journey. You could have recently started your journey or you are contemplating on starting a journey that God has placed over your heart or you are in the journey and you are trying as much as possible to stay strong and hopeful and positive and filled with faith and belief while you're in this journey. A quote comes to mind which says, the best project is not the perfect one but the completed one. I am trusting God that God gives you the blessing and the favor and the strength that is required not only to start, but to finish what you have started. I'm hoping that you will look into your own life as you listen to this podcast and find strength, courage, and in your own journey, this is also going to be a message that will be just helpful to push you to the next level. So let's begin. Now, Hosting Heaven was an idea that God gave me literally while I was in the middle of writing another book, which was specifically on purpose. I felt that as young people, we needed more people who were our age, who were millennials, who understood our minds, who understood our generation, who understood our experiences, and who could relate to where we are as young people, who could truly describe to us this thing that is called purpose. Because many of the people that I found in the streets were older people, older men and older women who probably lived in different seasons and different spaces and dispensations. But I wanted to be that person um, who also contributed to the body of literature when it comes to purpose. So I began to write a book on purpose. Uh, 
But while I was in the middle of writing this book on purpose, God spoke to me and he said, I want you to write a book about personal encounters with God. And I want you to open up your own relationship with me and begin to open up your journey to the people that are willing to listen. Because to God, that was much more of a bigger priority than the book on purpose. Now looking in hindsight, it actually dawns on me that for many people to fully and truly discover the depth and the fullness of who they truly are, they actually need to have and create and cultivate a relationship with God. So it did make sense that God wanted me to write a book on hosting heaven, learning to hear the voice of God for your life before I wrote a book on purpose. And so I had been writing on Facebook. I would post stuff on Facebook and it was getting quite a good kind of response from the few friends that were on my Facebook page. And so I decided to open a blog. So I opened up a blog and I started to post on the blog pretty much what I'd been doing on Facebook. And it was on this blog that I one day felt God nudging me to do a specific series, which I called, So You Want to Hear the Voice of God for Your Life. And it was a 10-part series in which I basically documented different seasons and spaces in my own personal journey with God, where God had been training me and teaching me and nurturing my ears to hear Him and to hear how He speaks and to, to hack into His voice so that I would be able to obey it. And so later on, it then turned out that when God wanted me to write Hosting Heaven, he said, go back to that blog. And I went to that series and he said, I want you to take all of these different 10 posts that you wrote and I want you to put them on a Word document. So I copied everything and I put it on a Word document. And there I was sitting with about 24 pages of just information and different chapters of my journey and in my head I was like so God is this the book you know and God says to me this is the skeleton I want you to begin to build up these stories and as I lead you you're going to write the book that I want you to write so the first lesson that I want you to learn today is that God has this beautiful ability of taking small things and causing them to be great because it all started from Facebook where I wrote posts and people responded. And then it became a blog and people began to respond. And then God took this blog and he created a book out of it. So whatever space you are in, I am reminded of Zechariah 4 verse 10 that I want to speak over your life as you listen. It says, do not despise the days of humble beginnings. For the Lord rejoices to see the work begin. Isn't that a beautiful scripture? It encourages us to appreciate, to love, to get satisfaction and joy from seeing a work begin. And to believe that if God started a work, that he will grow it. That he will nurture it, that he will begin to groom it and prune it until it begins to flourish and produce much fruit. So whatever God has called you to, I want you to be encouraged to know that God plants the seeds of big things in small things. So do not despise the place where you are at. Before this purpose book, you know, I kept hearing God say, right hosting heaven. And I think the second lesson that I learned from, from that is uh, something that I'd like to embody in a scripture. And it is Proverbs 19 verse 21. It says, many are the plans in a man's heart, but the purpose of the Lord prevails. So you could have a lot of different plans in your head. But when the Lord stops you right in the middle of your tracks, while you are going to another city and he says, I want you to take a... 180 degree turn and I want you to go back to where you're coming from or I want you to go to the place where you need to go and he gives you direction always be willing to be moved around by God because God knows the place where you're going to be most fruitful I can safely tell you right now that the lesson that I learned is that some of our most unlikely victories start with obedience and yielding to the will of God 
Only now do I begin to see the bigger picture of what God is doing with hosting heaven. Not just the book, but I begin to see candles coming out of it. I start seeing all these different things that I'm currently working on that I'm not even yet at liberty to disclose. But the, the vision begins to get bigger and bigger, something that I would have never even seen the day that he spoke to me while I was in the middle of doing something different. So be encouraged right where you are. I don't know if you relate with this specific example. What is God telling you to do today in your ministry, in your business, in your health, in your family, in your relationship, in your career? Obey because obedience is better than sacrifice. The most fascinating thing about this season in which I was writing Hosting Heaven is that, let me give you a bit of a backdrop of the season and the space where I was in. I was currently doing my postgraduate degree. It was a season filled with so much confusion, just uncertainty as to the direction that I wanted to go with my life and with my career. A lot of my friends had already gone ahead and started getting jobs and they were building lives. They were buying houses and cars and they were just really building such incredible, inspiring and beautiful lives for themselves. And there I was pursuing this postgraduate degree that I really didn't feel that inspired with. I was unemployed, I was broke, I was staying with a friend, and it was in this specific season and in this specific house where my friend stayed, where she had a prayer room. So she had specifically reserved in her house a room specifically designated for the purposes of prayer, just a set-apart room where she would just enter in and begin to connect with God. And so while I was staying with my friend, I heard God speak once again. And which is one of the things that I learn while you're journeying with God is that you always have to have your ears open to listening in and pressing into God. And sometimes it's not really about spending a lot of time in prayer and fasting and seeking God, all of which is incredible and great. And I highly encourage it. But sometimes it's just about staying at a place where you are in tune with heaven. And so I heard God say, Don't share your bedroom with her. (laughs) Don't share her bedroom with, with her. Just go and stay in a prayer room. And so I had to convince my friend that I need to stay in your prayer room. That's the place where I'm going to be sleeping. So as you can imagine, it's a prayer room. You don't have a bed in there. I literally took all my bedding and I just spent months on end just sleeping in that prayer room, seeking after God, waking up early hours of the morning, praying, pressing into God, just spending so much time seeking after God and praying for direction in my life. I truly believe that that is the place in which the vision that God gave over my life caught fire because I encountered God at a deeper level. In the season where I didn't have money to back me up, I didn't have anything that I felt like I had built to give me a sense of being or a sense of importance, God literally stripped me and he placed me on this threshing floor, this prayer altar, this place of connection and encounter with himself. And he said, this is the place where I want you to birth out hosting heaven. A lesson that I learned in that season is that God gives birth to some of his best work in our darkest seasons. Job wrote the book of Psalm while he was in some of the most excruciating and painful seasons of his life. Seasons where he was rejected. Seasons when he was unaccepted as a leader. Seasons where he was being sought out to be killed and eliminated. Seasons in which there was very little support from even the people that he loved. David persevered and still encountered God in those seasons. Seasons of persecution. Seasons of hopelessness. Seasons where you don't know where you're going for, from and you're going to and yet still God is working something in you. Job is a beautiful example because we see so much pain in his story, but we see so much beauty at the end. Look in your own life. What season are you currently in?
If you are in a season of great pain and great discouragement, I want to encourage you because I believe from my personal encounter and experience with God, that God is in the habit of birthing out some of his beautiful and best work in our dark seasons. I learned that perfect conditions are a myth. You have to start where you are. So in this, in this place of discomfort where I'm sleeping on the floor, where I don't have money to spoil myself or even to meet some of the most basic of needs, in, in this place where I'm in the hands of someone else who's really taking care of me, in the place where I had to, where I really had to be humble, God humbled me in this season. It was in this place where hosting him in the book was birthed out. When I was doing my Cape Town book signing, I brought with me three samples of hosting heaven, all carrying some of some form of defect or some of the things that I did not want to be a part of the book. Altogether in my home, I have about six samples, which I keep on this bookshelf in my house. And I love to keep them there as a personal reminder to myself that mistakes are going to be part of the journey. They're a constant reminder to me that you won't get it right the first time, but it's okay. Here's a lesson that I want you to grasp and to hold. You are not going to get it right the first time in many instances, but it's okay. Forgive yourself. Forgive yourself of the things that you went through negligently. Forgive yourself of the things that you've gone through or you've done knowingly. Forgive yourself of the things that have occurred to you without your knowledge. Forgive, forgive, offer forgiveness to yourself. Be kind to yourself and love yourself enough to forgive you as God has already forgiven you. I also learned that delay is not denial because these samples meant that I had to correct so many different errors and I had to edit and I had to revise and I had to review and perfect this product. You see, your vision is going to have so many different defects as you start because you won't start perfect, but the vision is perfected through working. It is perfected every single time you get denied by the bank. It is perfected. Every single time you tell a friend and they don't buy into it. And so you get the courage to go back and the motivation to go back in the secret place and to perfect that vision to such a place where when somebody asks you, you're able to articulate it in a few minutes and they're able to buy into it. As you're getting denied, as you're getting delayed, all of these different things, they are building up your momentum. They're building up your courage. They're building up your tenacity, building up your strength, your long suffering. They're building you up from within. They're building you up so that when you stand once again in front of these investors or you pitch your idea maybe to an incubator if you have a business idea, you are going to know how to articulate that thing with so much precision And it's going to yield the best results at the end. So remember, you won't get it right the first time, but it's okay. I remember specifically one day while we were struggling to edit the book for printing. I was feeling anxious. I was feeling paranoid. I was feeling all sorts of emotions because I didn't want the book to go out with a lot of errors. We wanted to minimize the amount of errors in that book as much as possible. And so I logged on to Instagram and on Instagram was a picture and this picture had been posted by a woman of God that I absolutely love and look up to. And here's what the caption read. It read, the book of your life does not need to be a masterpiece. It just needs to be written. I was so encouraged I was so inspired. It was such a rhema word for me. It was such a God word, a word that was seasoned and seasonal for my season. And that word is the word that carried me through the place where many of you might be stuck in, which is the place where you are trying to appease your perfection. 
Your desire to have a product that is ultimately perfect is stopping you from progress. It is stopping you from birthing out that thing that God has placed over you. I literally know people who say, I'm working in the background and one day I'm going to release what I have to the world. And I know a lot of people who have done this and it has worked for them. But the truth of the matter is that a lot of us, we grow in the journey. We mature in the journey. We evolve in the journey. We become better in the journey and we perfect the work of God in the journey through constant exercising of the gift. Right now, the teacher is placing a scripture over my spirit that says, stir up the gift in you, which was imparted on you through the laying on of hands. You have to stir the gift up through working it. You have to stir it up through exercising it. And so this is someone's word today that you have to begin to do. You have to begin to do. That is a word. I learned that God will constantly encourage you through others. If your ears keep open along the journey. And so always consistently make sure that you are connected with heaven. Connected with God. Connected to his voice. Connected to his leading and his direction in your personal journey. It could be a business. It could be ministry. It could be a career. It could be family relationships, courtships, and marriage. Always make sure that you're in tune with the voice of God. And it doesn't need to be audible necessarily. You just need to know how God speaks to you. And you need to have an ear and a heart and a spirit that is sensitive to the voice of God. So that when he speaks, whether it's through a dream or a vision or the word of God or your man of God. Or whether he speaks to you through a life experience that unravels itself right before you. You know that this is God speaking to me. If you have a copy of my book, Hosting Heaven, you will notice that there is a line at the bottom of one of the pages. And this is something that is consistent throughout the book. Well, there's a story behind that line and I love it. I absolutely love it. It's a long story, a frustrating story of me and our editors trying as much as possible to get that line out and yet We failed to get that line out of that formatting for the book. After trying so many times and just finding out that it was just something that was not working, we decided to make the line a part of the identity of the book. So we left the line there and if I had not told you this story, you probably wouldn't even know. (laughs) Why? Because you see, sometimes the mistakes we make become decorative to our work and our journey. I could be speaking right now to somebody who is a single mother who got pregnant out of wedlock. And the father of your child say no to you. And we know that there are so many mistakes that led to there being a child. The fact that maybe there was premarital sex. The fact that there was... A lot of things that you did wrong. A lot of different decisions that you did wrong. But guess what? This beautiful baby that is in front of you right now is not a mistake but a great blessing. He is intentional and God is going to use whatever happened to work all things together for good. And so sometimes we find out that even the mistakes that start as mistakes end up as a great blessing. And they end up decorating and furnishing and garnishing our lives in such a beautiful way. And they end up being great blessings to us. My encouragement to somebody who is on their journey is keep moving and focusing on the things you are doing right. There is a scripture in the word of God that says he makes all things work together for our good. Very, very common scripture, but sadly we fail to remember it in times when it's most important. And so I came today to encourage and to remind somebody who is in need of this scripture that God is going to make all things that are currently happening in your journey, in your space, in your season, in your life, in your career, in your marriage, in your relationship, in your business. He's going to make all things that look like they don't have a space in your future work together for your good.
He's going to take every piece of the puzzle and he is going to piece it up together in such a beautiful way. But when you truly look at what is going to come out as a beautiful painting and a beautiful piece out of all the experiences you've been through, you are going to be incredibly amazed at God's ability to take small little things that we thought were mistakes and make beautiful, great things out of it. The eighth lesson of this podcast is God will provide. God is going to provide for you. I'm going to repeat that again because somebody needs to hear it for the second time. I said God will provide for you. I have amazing, mind-blowing, life-changing testimonies of my personal journey writing Hosting Heaven, of how we went through so many great and amazing encounters with the provision of God. I had people partner up with me, with services, not making me pay for things that people paid thousands on end for. And this cut down the costs to doing the work that God had said I was supposed to do. You see, when God takes you out for dinner, I love what my pastor always says. He says, he will pay the bill. Some of the most expensive things that we had to do for the, for the book was even the photo shoot. The photo shoot required a lot of sacrifice on my part. And this is to say that there is going to be some form of sacrifice on your journey. I remember being in a season where I had no money at all, but I'd managed to save up about a thousand rand and it was about a hundred dollars probably. And this money was money that I didn't even really have because I was, I I was broke. I was broker than the word broke. (laughs) And I had to do a photo shoot. And specifically in the season, I was trying to hear the, the voice in the heart of God concerning God, should I use this specific photographer who was very expensive, but very effic- effective and efficient. Remember, I'm a student and I'm unemployed. So I remember just going on Facebook one day and I felt discouraged and I was low. I had this money, but I couldn't afford to use this money for something like a photo shoot. But while I'm scrolling through Facebook, God literally makes me click this particular post and It was a small little post that said, God will fund it. In that instant, if you have nurtured that knowing in you, I call it the Noah. (laughs) There is a Noah in a person's heart, in a Christian's heart, a believer's heart, a Holy Spirit, tongue-speaking believer's heart that knows when God speaks. And my spirit just leapt with gladness and joy and all the anxiety and depression immediately fell. In that moment, God spoke to me through that Facebook post. It was God's word affirming, confirming, encouraging, and girding me up in a season and instructing me that, listen, I want you to trust me. God could be speaking to you through this podcast and you are somebody that is afraid of the different costs that are going to be incurred in your journey. And God says, trust me, I will fund it. And as I close off today's podcast, I just want to encourage you to respect the process. Come on, respect the process. Don't try to rush it. Don't try to move fast through it. Don't try to quickly jump stages by taking shortcuts. Be in it. Let the process purge you. Let the process cleanse you. Let the process equip you. Let the process make you into a new woman or a new man. Such that when you finish whatever it is God has placed over your heart to do, You are a completely different person already. You have become a different person already. God is more concerned about your journey than he is about your destination. I know you love what's at the end of the tunnel. 
Maybe it's the glitz. Maybe it's the glam. Maybe it's the fame. Maybe it's the financial stability. Maybe it's the happiness, the joy, the peace, less hours at work. I don't know what your end goal is. But let me tell you something. God is more concerned about your journey than he is about your destination. Because it is through this journey that you are becoming. You are becoming a great candidate right now in this season for success while you're at it. Every single thing that's happened to you is making you the best candidate for success. I'm going to recap as we close off this podcast. Remember, these are the eight lessons that we spoke about today. Number one, God plants the seed of big things in small things. Second lesson was some of your most unlikely victories start with obedience and willingness to yield to God's will. The third lesson in our podcast was God gives birth to some of his best work in your dark seasons. Number four, perfect conditions are a myth. Step out and start from where you are. Number five, you won't get it right the first time in many instances, but it's okay. Forgive yourself. Number six, God is always encouraging us through others. So have an attentive ear on your journey. Number seven, Sometimes mistakes become decoratives to the work that we are doing. And number eight, God will provide. Thank you so much for joining me today in my House of Hosting Heaven podcast. My name is Ritendo Melody Kanguru. And remember, my journey started on my YouTube channel, The Teacher's Show. You need to make time and go check that out. And you have just been listening to House of Hosting Heaven, a podcast for women that are ready to partner up with God in intentionally designing the Christian life they love to live in. See you again next week on Friday. I can't wait to see you. Enjoy your day and God bless you. Bye.